going? Hi everyone, this is LinkCelo, and welcome to my review of Transformers Devastation for the PlayStation 4. Wow, four months already? My last review was on August 4th, 16 days before I went to college, and ever since then, I've kind of put my channel on the backseat for a while, but hey, better late than never. Also, a month before the Overwatch video, I posted a review preview for the game Tales of Zestiria, and long story short, I played the game, didn't enjoy it, and as a result, I didn't want to dedicate time to making a video of it. During the year, however, I have added many free PlayStation Plus games to my library, and one of those games were Transformers Devastation. I've seen several videos of the game prior to playing the game, but I just got around to playing it, and the experience I've had with it well, listen on and find out. Now, without further ado, let's do this thing. Man, it feels good to say that again. We will arrive any moment now, and Megatron is waiting for us. I'd like to start out by saying that I didn't grow up with the Generation 1 Transformers cartoon. I got into Transformers later on and became a casual fan of them, so I will not count my nostalgia for what I knew back then as a factor for getting into the game or not. While I knew of most of the references in the game, and there were a lot, I don't think that should play a factor in the overall recommendation for those that just like hack and slashes. Now on to the story. The game is structured as a cartoon show, with every mission taking place in the same city like an episode of the show probably would. In this game, you play as a transforming defense force named the Autobots, and your enemy is the Decepticons. As you could probably figure out, each of the robots are able to transform into a different automobile, with the exception of Grimlock who transforms into a dinosaur. The Autobots' main goal is to stop Megatron from cyberforming the planet of Earth into a new home for the robots. How do you do this, you ask? By hack and slashing the Insecticons that plan on getting in your way. The story took 5 hours and 35 minutes to complete on the normal difficulty, but it really felt longer. Honestly, I wanted the game to keep going the more I played it, but it ended so soon. The story felt like more of a distraction than the central focus of the game. The gameplay clearly was the focus of development, and that isn't a bad thing in the slightest. The story served its purpose and moved the plot along with enough sense to keep it going. While the enemy types weren't as varied as most people would care about, every enemy type at least had a name and a purpose in the Transformers universe. The bosses also repeated a few times, namely Devastator and Motormaster. Other than repetition, this game's story provides a reason for playing, and that's all a game like this really needs. And for Transformers fans, it only sweetens the deal. Now, the sweet spot of the entire game. The hack and slash gameplay. This game is very heavy in the combat, and it does not disappoint. Me personally, I love hack and slashes. More specifically, Platinum Games hack and slashes. Every combat scenario that you find yourself in grades you for your performance, similar to other Platinum hack and slashes like Bayonetta, Beautiful Joe, and The Wonderful 101. In the spirit of the old school, it also gives off that vibe that you're intelligent and you're capable of doing everything yourself, and it rewards you for doing just that. Low on health? Too bad. Look for some health pickups. Need a new weapon? Make one with the parts you collected in the city. Can you complete this challenge? If so, here are some weapons and some money. I am one that loves getting rewarded for going that extra mile at my own pace. This is a game that treats you like a gamer and not a child. It's challenging, rewarding, and satisfying. Like, listen to this combo! Not to mention that the city you play in, while being the only city that you see, is filled with secret side missions and collectibles that you either have to go out of your way to collect, or shoot out of the sky to unlock artwork and other goodies. There is also this area that you can access between missions and at special markers in the world called the Ark that allows you to equip and fuse weapons to make them stronger, create techs that are basically upgrades that you can put on your Autobot of choice. When I say Autobot of choice, that means every Autobot that you see in the game, you can play as them all if you wish. They have different stats and abilities and your choice is dependent on your playstyle. You can choose between Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Sideswipe, Wheeljack, and Grimlock, and all of them are selectable at any point upon visiting the Ark. The weapons come in so many varieties, and this game has a surprisingly well-made shooting system that could have been made for a game based solely on shooting. 
It was just as expertly crafted as the melee combat, and while it may not be used as much, when it is used, it functions very well, and I love how much work was put into the weapons. This game has both the Star Saber and the Dark Star Saber. That is some pretty cool stuff. Not to mention there is a focus mechanic, or Witch Time from Bayonetta, that allows you to get free hits on your opponent if you dodge their attacks at the right time. Overall, this game is amazing from a gameplay standpoint, however the camera is not as friendly to the player. Constantly getting stuck on walls and in close quarters areas, the cameras can definitely fight with you. While it didn't destroy my enjoyment, it was definitely noticeable. Busy. We've almost won! We are almost there. Time to crash the party. The soundtrack to this game wasn't as full frontal as other elements in the game, but I can say that the music fit the game enough to where it was comfortable to listen to during the main game. I won't be looking for it on YouTube anytime soon, but it definitely sufficed. But the best sounds by far are the clashing of the metals and the banging of the robots fighting each other. Every hit in this game has so much impact because of the loud sounds of hammers and swords hitting each other. This is part of what made me keep playing the game. It was so satisfying to hear all of those crushing blows destroy the opposition, and the credits theme at the end of the game just screamed old school. I was content with the sound quality of the game as well. All of the voices matched who they were accompanying, and they sounded good too. I have absolutely no complaints on the sound of this game. For those of you that like completing your games 100%, this game has you covered in the form of side missions, optional tasks that you can activate at your leisure, and collectibles that come in the form of treasure chests, Decepticon flags, and Crimzeek that all give you a piece of art guaranteed if you collect them. The city and the other areas in the game that you're able to go to are decently sized, with the city being almost able to be called a hub world. It's huge and filled to the brim with secrets to find and enemies to fight. Going off of the beaten path almost always gives you something to find. The game also has a detailed results spreadsheet that tells you the percentage of everything you have found and side missions you have done. While the game was only 5 hours in length, if I had gone for all of the collectibles instead of casually finding them as I went, then I could have gotten a few more hours out of the game easily. Not to mention that the game has a challenge mode with all of the missions you have unlocked. Plus, the game has a try me button for the character model viewer. Autobots, roll out! I love this feature of the game, it's just too cute. Overall, the extra content, for those that indulge in it, can easily extend the time you play and the enjoyment you have with the game. In conclusion, Transformers Devastation, for how short the game is, is a surprisingly wonderful package. Great graphics, excellently crafted hack and slash gameplay, and enough content to have you coming back for more. This game is definitely worth the purchase if you find it on sale. $20 or less would be the perfect price for a game of this size. Any more would be asking a little too much for those who just want to beat the story and that's all. The story mode alone is not worth the asking price, but if you sink your teeth in a bit deeper, it will keep your attention for much longer and you should be satisfied. And that's pretty much it. This has been Link Solo and I'll get you guys back. Hope you all enjoyed. Comment, rate, do whatever you want, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace and savvy. As of writing this script, there are 22 playable characters in Overwatch. There is Genji, McCree, Play Nice, Play Farah, Reaper, Soldier 76, Lena Oxton, Play of the Game Number One, Ryuga Wagateki Wakurao, Play of the Game Number Two. Uh, gets Play of the Game without even being there. Oh, but she looks like a man. Big bucket of chicken. It's fair, licking Gotcha, my darling Sonic. Amy, what are you doing here? Sonic, this time there's no way out of marrying me. Slut, and overcompensating for his small di- All of these conclusions have individual stories that intertwine with each other What's and come this? to one solid conclusion. Getting the skull heart by defeating Marie and-